the Hamilton Principle. How can we model and simulate the dynamics of a structure? Here is a real world example. Imagine there is a storm and a gust of wind just slams this beautiful building. This building will start swaying from one side to the other. Hence, there is an exchange of kinetic energy and potential energy every time the building sways back and forth. And there is also energy dissipation due to friction. To reduce such vibrations, tuned mass dampers are installed in all skyscrapers. See the link below if you don't know what a tuned mass damper is. In order to design suitable tuned mass dampers, we need to model and simulate the dynamics of this structure. Here is another example showing the liftoff of the SpaceX SXM-7 rocket. If we want to precisely deploy a satellite in orbit, we need to accurately compute and guide the trajectory of the rocket using simulations. What can we say about the dynamics of this body? What will happen in the next millisecond? From an energetic point of view, the kinetic energy increases as the velocity is increasing, the potential energy increases because we are moving further away from the Earth's surface, there is energy dissipation due to heat generated by friction with the surrounding air, and all this energy comes from stored chemical energy because energy can only be converted from one form to the other. These are just two examples of real-world dynamical systems. In order to simulate the dynamical behavior of real engineering structures or systems, first we model the structure. Modeling is just another name for simplifying the description of the real structure by focusing only on the relevant features. Here, the swaying of the building can be represented by an inverted pendulum. Once we have this model, we need to find the equations that govern the behavior of such a model, usually in terms of differential equations. Once we have the differential equations, we can solve them using computers to simulate the behavior of the system. This lecture will focus on how we can mathematically describe the dynamical behavior of any structure. We can characterize the dynamical behavior of such physical structures using two methods. Newtonian mechanics or Lagrangian mechanics. Lagrangian mechanics is based on balancing energies, while Newtonian mechanics is based on balancing forces. Here L is called Lagrangian, Q is called the generalized coordinate, in other words the position. Q dot is equivalent to the velocity and t is the time. The subscript i in the position and the velocity variables is a variable that denotes the various individual components, also called degrees of freedom, of a complex dynamical system with several moving parts. What do we mean by balancing energies? The Lagrangian for a simple physical system is the difference between the kinetic and the potential energy. An intuitive way to understand why we take the difference is because of energy conservation. As the potential and kinetic energies are constantly swapping in a vibrating structure, the energy difference is what determines the dynamical behavior. Let a certain system be defined by a certain position and velocity at time tn. At a later time, the same system would have changed its position and velocity depending on the energetic changes to the system. Thus, we can represent the dynamics of a system as an integral of the Lagrangian. The integral of the Lagrangian i is called the action. Having defined the action, we are ready to introduce the Hamilton principle. According to the Hamilton principle, the true movement of a system is the one that minimizes action. The local minimum of a continuously differentiable function is simply the stationary point of the first derivative of the function. In other words, we compute the first derivative of the function and set it equal to zero. But how do we compute the derivative of a functional? 
The action is a function, that is, a function of another function. A method to compute the rate of change of a function with respect to another function is called functional derivation. For example, if you want to compute the rate of change of a tensor with respect to a vector, we could do that using functional derivatives. The functional derivative is defined analogous to the definition of the classical derivative. Instead of perturbing the independent variable, here we perturb the function with another function parameterized by the helper variable epsilon. In practical terms, we introduce the perturbed definition of the function into our function, take the derivative with respect to epsilon, and eliminate the parameter. This method allows to differentiate continuous quantities such as the rate of change of a tensor with respect to a vector, so on and so forth. Now, let's compute the derivative of the action. First, we introduce the perturbations or variations, also called test functions, into our definition of the action. We can apply the chain rule, expand, and then eliminate the parameter epsilon. Once we have eliminated the parameter epsilon, we obtain the rate of change of the functional as a function of the Lagrangian, our variables q, and the perturbations, variations, or test functions h. The second term in the first expression can be rewritten using the product rule, which is simply the derivative of u and v is equal to u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Introducing the product rule, we obtain two terms. The second term in this equation is the boundary term and the last term is just the definition obtained from the product rule. The boundary term can be eliminated because the function h is 0 at tn and tn plus 1. Now looking at the left hand side and the right hand side we can extract the terms corresponding to the functional derivative that is, corresponding to the definition of the functional derivative. Applying the stationarity condition, that is, setting the functional derivative equal to zero, we get the Euler-Lagrange equation. Once we have specified the Lagrangian of the system, the differential equations that govern the dynamical behavior of the system can be derived by applying the Euler-Lagrange equations. Enough theory for today, and now it's time to program.